Power stations have become really popular over the past couple years. And today we're going to be creating a DIY solar generator power station using this lithium battery from Sycon and a few extra materials we have on site and show you what it's capable of. So with that being said, let's jump right into it and get started. So Vyant is going to be your tour guide today and explain to you what we got going on over here and what's the plan with all of this stuff. We are going to build our own power station and for that we are using a lot of material that we already have, like this old inverter that we never used. We got this, is the uh, solar charger controller. It's really cheap, she will put the link in the description, like 18 bucks on Amazon. Also an old box that we put the battery into it to make it more like portable. And when we installed the battery in the RV, we were waiting for a, a charger inverter that can do lithium and we had another one extra, so we'll use that too. So this power station will be available to be charged with the solar panel and also with the AC110, the classic plug. So we can do all of it. And the inverter that will be, uh, it's kind of a smaller one, is what we have. And uh, to keep the budget very low for this power station is a, a 750 watt and 1500 watt peak. Also, what we want to do to make it safe and easy to build, everything that we use, we use like kind of fast connector. So when we want to use the AC connection, this will be plugged to the AC charger to the battery with like a fast connector. Uh, same for the solar panel, we use like fast connection. And also for the um, inverter, there will be kind of uh, some fast connection, but we'll have to use those twists. And we'll have to change the clamp for the battery to like battery connector like that. So that will be the only more difficult stuff to do. If not, it's almost like just plug and play. And also we use for all this power station, 10 gauge wire, except for the one from the battery to the inverter, we use the one that come from with the inverter. So let's just do it. So that's the general plan. First up, we're going to go ahead and set everything up and build our little system. Then we're gonna take it and put it straight to use and test it as we have a fun little day out and about and just enjoying the day together. So that's the plan. Let's get rolling. First up, we are going to attach the solar charger to this box. So we're drilling the box and we're going to bolt the solar charger to the top of the box. Now we're going to do the same thing with the inverter. We're using zip ties to hold the inverter in place on the top of the battery box.
There used to be a clip on the side to hold the lid in place, but it broke off. As Viant mentioned before, we are using a lot of leftover materials we had on site, so this battery box is one of the leftover materials. So Viant added some zip ties to function as sort of a hinge and keep the lid in place. You can go back and upgrade things like this, but for now, we just want to use things we already have to keep the cost down and make sure everything is functioning properly before we upgrade anything. So it's not the best hinges, but that will work. We did that because the clips broke in the back. So we just put like these two zip ties so we can still open, service the battery, do the connection, and also close it. We'll install the connector of the battery. So it's cool, they come with two extra. This Seacon battery is capable of 5,000 cycles to 100% and 18,000 cycles to 60%, with the remaining capacity exceeding 80% after 5,000 cycles. The battery comes with two extra bolts, a removable carrying strap, and a user manual. The ABS plastic housing material is fire resistant and it has an IP65 waterproof rating, so it's suitable for boat use. The overall construction of this battery is really well done and thought out. The cells are placed sideways without blocking the explosion-proof valve. Foam is placed around the cells for secure placement and impact prevention, and it's laser welded for secure battery cell terminals. Insulation board between the cells and BMS helps to protect the BMS from interference and short circuits, and one millimeters of foam between each cell helps prevent expansion and compression. As you can see, the positive terminal has a four gauge cable and the negative terminal has a seven gauge cable. Stay tuned to see how this battery performs when we take it out and test it while doing something fun. Since the inverter we have comes with battery clamps, we have to remove them and change them out for battery connector cables. We want to be able to charge the battery with 110 AC power, and we want to have a quick connect so we can exchange it easily when switching between solar and AC power. So that is what we're setting up now. We labeled the cables so it's easier to know what goes where, and this is the final result.
Now we're going to install the quick connect cables for the solar charger. We connected all the cables to the solar charger and used clamps to secure each set to the box. That way we don't accidentally pull them out when moving everything around. All right. Before to charge your battery, we want to make sure we have the bull volt voltage from the AC charger. And yes, 14, that 53, so 14.6 almost. Exactly what we need for a lithium battery. So now that the system is pretty much set up, we're going to connect everything and go from there. All right, quick disconnect, solar charger, controller, up, on. If we want charge with AC, up, on, and the inverter is plugged. We have fuse on every connection. And I guess now we'll just charge the battery. So it looks like the battery is pretty much ready to go and charged. So we are going to unplug everything, pack it up, and go get some adventure. So we are out at the river today. Super windy, but super sunny and nice. So we have our DIY power station with us down by the river. So I'm gonna head down there show you guys what we got going on and how we plan on using it. We brought our ice maker for this hot day to enjoy some nice cold beverages. So we are going to plug it in to the inverter and get it started. Since the inverter has a USB port, we're going to charge our phone and later our speaker as well. To test out the solar, we brought one of our solar panels with us and connected it to the solar charger on the battery box with the Quick Connect. We also brought our portable refrigerator from EcoFlow so we can connect that to the inverter as well. That way we can keep our drinks and snacks nice and cold on this super hot day by using the Seacon battery. So we have power being generated by solar and at the same time, the power is being used by the inverter. So we've been using this solar panel to charge and power our little DIY power station right here. We made a bunch of ice and we've been charging our phone and charging the speaker. So everything is working really great. We use the inverter to charge the power station with standard electricity. So everything is good and so far it's working great. This setup is perfect for camping or picnics, etc. And with a better inverter, you can actually do a lot more with this Seacon battery. 
We were limited by the size of our inverter to 750 watts, but this battery is capable of way more. It has a 1280 watt hour capacity and can easily crank out 100 plus amps of power. I added a link to the description of another YouTube video where the battery is load tested and you guys will be shocked at the results. Since our inverter is only 750 watts, we couldn't really do any super crazy load testing, but even with the smaller inverter, the Seacon battery ran everything flawlessly for the entire day. Keeping food and drinks cold on hot days is always really challenging, and this setup was the perfect way to fight off the heat and keep everything nice and fresh. Recently, I've been making a lot of cherry lime spritzers with a little bit of sparkling water, and it is so refreshing. Highly recommend this drink combo for a hot day. I'm really happy with the DIY power station setup we created with the Seagon battery. And I'll include links to all the products we use in the description. The Seacon battery performed flawlessly, and we were able to spend the entire day with cold drinks, charged electronics, and ice. This battery can also be used for RV, boating, off-grid systems, and other applications as well. Everything we used in this video is on the low end cost-wise, so that way, if you guys want to create the same system for yourself, you can go ahead and do that without hurting the wallet too much. The Seacon battery is available at a super low price and is the best value on the market. So check out the link in the description if you guys wanna pick up this battery and recreate the same system that we just made. Expand your options and capabilities with the Seacon Lithium battery and do more with less. Setting up a DIY power station like this is really great because you can use it for a little bit more than what you typically could with like a regular power station because you can use this battery by itself for boats, RVs, and a bunch of other different uses. So if you ever wanted to undo everything and use this for another purpose, it's totally possible. So that makes it really versatile and just great to have around. And then you can also use it as a power station. If you guys are interested at all in any of the products that we use today, like I said, I will link them all below in the description. So head down there to check it out. Special thank you to Sycon for sponsoring this video. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Help support our channel by leaving a comment, liking, and sharing this video. As always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up with our projects and adventures on Pacific Pines Ranch. We put out new videos every Saturday and sometimes even during the week. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss any. Okay, bye.